Oh, we just getting started on the kickback. Jazzy Black, let's get it going. Yeah, we in Dallas. We in Dallas. Shout out to Atlanta, hey. though. But, you know, Texas girls do it a little bit different, I just got to say. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Uh, my name is Jazzy Black. I'm the midday personality out here in Dallas, Texas. Um, I just want to welcome Miss Ebony and Miss Yanni to the kickback. Uh, thank you, ladies, for coming. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. us. Of course. I'm super excited. Now, look, I missed uh, episode one, so I'm definitely trying to get my catch up on right now. But out of all of everybody that I've been seeing going crazy on Twitter, especially my friends, everybody is like super psyched about Kings of Napa. And I think it's so cool because the black luxury in this is like, yes, we deserve like this is what we've been waiting on. Um, what is it like yes. to be a part of, you know, such a pioneering um, show and to be able to represent, uh, you know, black luxury? Because like this is lit and it's so cute and I just love it. Um, first of all, I love your energy. I just have to say, oh, <laughs> yes. yes, thank you. Your energy is just coming so clear through the phone. I would just say, you know, it's a dream. It's a dream to be a part of something like that. And yeah. precisely because of what you're saying, like I know when I see any images like this on screen at all in the snippets that we get to see, yeah. I get excited, right? I right. want to dress up. I love the drama. Let's just spill some tea. You know what I mean? Like For we real? like to hang with our girls. We just it's delicious, you know, and um, so to get to be involved in something like that and then see how the community online is reacting to it. Yeah, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun being a part of this at this time. And it feels really yeah, shout out oh, to sorry, our go Twitter ahead. family. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. They love it. It's great. It's great to see. And it feels um, really organic with both of your characters, August and Bridget. Um, you know, how much uh, input do you have, you know, as far as, like, character development, um, especially, you know, as the season goes along? It's been pretty hands-on. I play Bridget, and I'm, I'm sure... That's Yanni, by the way, everybody. That's Yanni. Yes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is Yanni. I play Bridget. Um, and from moment one, I think before we even went to, to start shooting, um, I was getting phone calls from... Um, the hair department and the wardrobe department about what her hair looks like yes. and shout out to Erica Croft who did all yeah. of our pieces and shout out to Michelle Light who did all of our wardrobe and you know talking about like you know make a little folder for what you think Bridget likes and what so that it was very hands-on cool. just from an outside point um, of the you know hair and wardrobe and then also you know talking with Janine when we got to set about who these characters are yeah very collaborative for sure a hundred percent I echo everything Yanni says I was going to start with that too just like building the character from the ground up mm -hmm. um, I've never actually been this involved in the process yeah. before mm -hmm. so it was really really cool right and neither one of you are strangers to the camera um, so I can only imagine <laughs> you know like uh, especially working with a, with a network like OWN. Um, and, you know, there's, I mean, we've seen interviews all the time where we see black act actresses uh, talk about, you know, the different disparities whenever they're working with different production companies when it comes to, like, you know, your hair and your makeup and, like, making sure that, like, you know, we look how we look in real life and not, like, how the media wants us to look. Um, so, like, that's really exciting. Um, so, you know, I want to talk a little bit about, like, the family dynamics um, especially with, like each of your characters, because I know you both bring something different to the table. Um, and I know as the season goes along, like we'll be able to unfold and be like, oh my gosh, no, she didn't. Um, you know, be able to learn more about your characters. <laughs> but, you know, right now, uh, kind of talk to me a little bit about the family dynamics. Um, and, you know, like, you know, what is that? Uh, what does that mean to you, you know, as far as like portraying, you know, your particular character and like what your character is like adding to the overall, like, you know, power of the show? You know what I love about the family dynamic on the show is that it reminds me of my own family and the families of all my friends. You know, right. it's like there's a character who's all up in the middle of all the mess, who knows all the tea. I have an aunt just like that. In fact, I was talking to my cousin about hey, who that auntie. was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> For real. There's a person, there's, I'm August, I play the middle child, and my mom is a middle child. And so, like, just even how August relates to her siblings and her mom and trying to get everybody on the same page and this yeah. constant need to like hold everything together you know that was very familiar to me I just love that we get to represent the family dynamics 
of many families, but also the specific flavor that it takes on in black families yeah. that we just to get, get to do it in such an authentic way. Right. I love that. And, and it's so funny, uh, Ebony saying that we, that she relates to the family itself. I think we were on set talking about like, this is who that is in my family and that's who this is. And as, as Bridget, who is the cousin of the King family, but was raised with them. I actually have a cousin that um, was raised with my brothers and I. Yeah. And so, and, and is my sister. If anyone asks, that's my sister. Right. I don't say that. Like, cousin, that's your cousin, cousin that's your sister, right. so, Exactly. So there's, we, we all ha- can talk, speak to that, you know, where you, especially within the black unit, I feel like, we we use labels differently. Like everyone's an auntie, and yeah. everyone, right. <laughs> you know, your cousins can be your siblings. Like it's more about the connection and the emotional bond than it is about the label. And right. so I feel like we show that um, mm-hmm. in this family that like we blur the lines of like we are tight. And so who cares if it's cousin? Who cares? Whatever. Yeah, we're close. And so I I feel like that shows up. Um, in in that dynamic and shout out to that sister Kosa. she's in denton texas actually hey she in denton shout out okay cousin cousin yeah. sister if you hear this girl call up to the radio station um you know um i also think it's really cool that um you know as women and like navigating through this industry you know um you know of course, you know, as audience members, we're attaching ourselves to, you know, the characters, but we're also attaching ourselves to the actresses, you know, and like who you are Mm -hmm. outside of, you know, the show. So, um, and, you know, especially like having like Harpo and stuff behind you, everybody's like trying to get their hands on you now. Um, So what is life like uh, for both of you, you know, uh, you know, jumping into this new, new sort of uh, project and this new journey uh, along your acting career? You know, ooh. I think that you, I, I love this question, by the way. Because I know I everybody is like, oh, you you working with Oprah now, so I can only imagine people are like, what's up? <laughs> Call me back. Remember me from middle school? And you're like, what? What are you talking about? You ain't telling lies, Jazzy, at all. I know, all. I know. I know. I know. I feel like this, sorry, this is Ebony speaking just to differentiate, I realize, because we're on the radio. But, um... I feel like this we're, job came we're not out of really... right now. We're pre-recording, by the way. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um, that's great to know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this job came along at a um, at the right time in my life. You know, mm-hmm. the right momentum in terms of building a career. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, we had 2020. I was at home for most of that year. You know, Girl, and same. it gave me a lot of time to think about what I wanted next in this profession as opposed to just like what was coming at me which is kind of how you start or at least how I started yeah um and I think in terms of you know people um, hitting you up about now Oprah's behind you and like thinking about the future I just think I'm wide open from that year of having time to think and reflect I know what I want in the long run but right now I'm just wide open to the possibilities and I think that this show is already carving out a vision of of what can be possible and what we can represent in the yeah. conversation and in this industry. I I love that. This is Yanni. I I <laughs> Ebony and I always are like we're twins because <laughs> we think we'll have like the same thought about something. And it's literally that. I feel like inner doors have opened before anything else. Like I'm finding that I'm ready for things that I'd never really thought about because it's you know, you have your dreams and you have the things that you want to manifest, but there's something totally different from when you actually start walking in that path and have tangible evidence of you succeeding at something. Ooh, girl, you it speak. changes the perspective, mm-hmm. you know? And so being in this role, and you're right, neither of us are new to being in front of the camera, but in this way, it is definitely new territory and having this kind of, power and this this much of a voice in creating these characters has changed a lot for me in what I'm thinking about manifesting for the next thing but there have definitely been the you know people reaching out right (laughs) um it's a lot on Facebook (laughs) um but I will say none of it has been 
bad. Like none of it's been like, ooh, I didn't want to talk to that person. It's been right. very <laughs> sweet and and all from junior high, but all really like genuinely that are happy. Up, I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah, genuinely happy and, and, and like blowing my mind that like they'll be posting their own posts about the show and their excitement and I'm like, you know what? Thank you. That's just very sweet. Right. No, it could good. have been that like other situation. Right. And I was really glad that you, you know, mentioned just as far as like manifesting and, you know, I think you know, the entire world since the pandemic has kind of gone through like this whole like spiritual enlightenment, um, which I think is really cool because a lot of us are kind of taking a step back and learning to appreciate, you know, just being around family and appreciating the things that we have. And I think it's really cool to be able to watch the show because it feels really organic. Uh, you know, even though like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, my, my people ain't got no vineyard or nothing, but it's cool because I can still watch the right. show and still relate to the family dynamics and relate to the people that I see. And I can see, you know, black women that are like, yes, you know, like here and fabulous and like ready to take care of business. Um, so that's really wonderful. What advice do you have uh, to give to aspiring actors and actresses, especially out here in the DF dub, um, that are ready to, you know, that are like, hey, you know, I feel like I've been working hard and working hard and I've been trying to manifest, but, like, I just don't know if it's going to break for me. What what advice do you have uh, for those aspiring actors and actresses that are, like, literally on the break of, like, giving up? I have a don't. couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't All right, M&A. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you know what? I love that because that was one of the first things that came to mind was, Listen, the, the difference between the people who break through and the people that don't is that at some point you give up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you have mm-hmm. to keep putting yourself in the way of the dream that you have for yourself, if that yeah. makes sense. Like sometimes you have to pivot, you know, sometimes you have to take a step back and think, okay, these things I was doing, they haven't been working out how I meant them to. So what yeah. can I learn? Because there's something there to glean. And how can I change that moving forward? And just honestly keep at it because – it's, it can be a discouraging industry, you know, trying to break through into entertainment or just the performative arts in general. Right. But I think that the most um, important resource that I have is my own belief in myself and to just keep going past the points that other people maybe think you should stop. I, know that. I love that. I would add to that. that I said, the reason why I said don't is because it's just literally that. Like, you, you, you have no idea what rooms your name is being spoken in. You have no idea who's rooting for you that you haven't even thought about. Mm -hmm. And the only way you find the answer to that, the only way you find out who those people are is if you keep at it. And, and for me, I also want to just shout out people that have side hustles, people that have day jobs, people that like, I, I was just at a day job before I booked this series. I was working at a restaurant and there's no shame in that. Like, Right. My dad was like, you are working at this restaurant and they are investing in your acting career. And that's how I looked at it right. as, as an investment and not like a failure of like, oh, I'm, I'm not a full-time whatever. Like, don't get caught up in that. Don't look at the flash and the shine that other people are, are doing. You have no idea what people are going through and struggling with. Mm-hmm. So just like if you, gotta, if you have to have that hustle or that day job or that nine to five or whatever it is, and that's fueling your art. Let it do that. Okay. Don't think that you that you're not an artist because you're not doing this 100 percent of the time every day. Right. That's not real. So yeah. let that fund that while you keep pushing. If 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 the give up is because you can't afford to live 100 percent as an artist, go get a job and then keep pushing. Like that's that's my biggest piece of advice. For real. You know what? I know that's right. Uh, Pastor <laughs> Ebony and Reverend Yanni coming through with the word tonight for the girls. Okay, it's the energy for me. Uh, the episode episode two watch party is going down tonight, right? Yes, it is. It's lit. Okay, look, I'm calling up my girls. We're going to have our wine ready, okay? We're going to make a little, uh, what do you call it, a little charcuterie board, a little cheese, a little grape. Yes, yes. We're going to keep it Make cute. it an event. Make it a weekly date for yourself and your girls. You make your charcuterie, you pour your wine. For real. You maybe hop on the YouTube watch party, and okay. then you hop on the live tweet. Yes. Now nah, look, because why, why Twitter be cut up? Sometimes I'll be like, you know, I got to get on Twitter because y'all be doing a lot. And some people's TVs be like two minutes before mine. So I'll be like, uh-uh, you can't be, you know, we in different time zones. It's true. Let's spoil We're in different time zones. Them, so you're right, you're right. But look, I'm going to see y'all tonight uh, on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Uh, much success to you ladies in 2022. And uh, thank you again thank so you much for taking some time to speak with me. 
Thank, Thank you. It was lovely. You had a good time.